something going on Your freedom is in danger Agents of the state They taking children from the manger Oh, they will sacrifice your kid Take Brendan Dassey That's exactly what they did They needed someone Oh, Jody wouldn't flip They looked around Saw him quick Oh, it made so much sense why Oh, Brendan Dassey, he was Stephen's alibi There's something going on In Wisconsin that's not kosher We better stop, let's all take a look closer Oh, they will sacrifice your kid For Brendan Dassey, that's exactly what they did They visit him once, they visit him twice They make him feel so safe Sandwiches so to so nice No cameras rolling and under no lights Who knows what went on up in Fox Hill Monday night There's something going on and Freedom is in danger Everything about this can't get in stranger and stranger Oh, we know they will sacrifice your kid Oh, Brendan Dassey, that's exactly what they did March 1st, alone in a room with Bert and Ernie No parent present and no attorney Four hours later, with a touch of the knee They finally get Brendan to a there's something going on I said there's something going on Oh They will sacrifice your kid Take Brendan Dassey That's exactly what they did There's something going on I said freedom is in danger When the agents of the state Can take the children from the manger they will sacrifice your kid Take Brendan Dassey That's exactly what they did Take Brendan Dassey Oh, that's exactly what they did Everybody, how you doing? Eric Jose, I'm making a murder here. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about Brendan Dassey and the control question. Uh, my good friend Fen, who's over on Twitter doing the hashtag 80 more things, and she's been doing day by day, and she's getting closer to you know the the final the final uh, days here. So uh, she wanted me to go ahead and do a, a clear, concise video to talk about the control question her to add to the tweet that she's going to be doing here pretty soon. So, <clears throat> I put on my Wrecking Crew tie because I love to talk about what a ridiculous thing the control question is, right? Alright, so, <clears throat> what we're going to do today is add a little something extra to this control question video and that is we're going to talk a little bit about the stats that came out of that recent paper uh, with the Wisconsin law professor and the speech language pathologist that recently did the paper and and where they went under the hood and they really started to quantify um, all the interactions between Brendan and the law and, and, the, and the investigators and that sort of stuff and what those what those quantifying factors really signified and indicated right so we're going to show a little bit of that as well along with going through the control question and pointing out why it isn't what it is not what Tom Fassbender and the on bank majority claim it is it's nothing near what they claim it is it's 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 completely a proof of the opposite of what they claim it proves they claim it proves that Brendan was 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 telling the truth, you know that it, it that it that it you know corroborates his confession to a, to a certain extent. So as we watch the video, which I'm going to be playing here in a second, I'm gonna we're gonna go through what what the the officers expected 
when they ask the question and that sort of stuff. And we're going to go through it kind of section by section and point out exactly what happened. And Brennan, Brennan initially gives an answer that they're happy with, but then they push it and then Brennan flip flops because he's malleable. He's buckling to their will and telling them what he believes they want to hear. That's what the control question proves. And so for Tom Fassbender and the on-bank majority to be claiming, and even the state of Wisconsin's uh, courts, uh, to be saying that it proves that Brennan's confession was valid, it, it absolutely proves how suggestible he was and how malleable he was in the hands of investigators. So we're going to go ahead and go through the, the video clip of the confession now. And we're gonna go through it and 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 kind of take it apart or deconstruct it a bit. So here we go. That Teresa had a, a tattoo on her stomach. Do you remember that? Uh-uh. Okay, so to explain a little bit here, what's happening is Tom Fassbender has just asked Brendan a question. This question is kind of tricky in the sense that he actually made up the fact that he's talking about. Tom Fassbender, what he's trying to do here is he's trying to create a situation where he can make Brendan's confession more believable. So what he's doing is making up a false fact to ask Brendan in the hopes that Brendan will deny it. And therefore it will make the rest of the confession seem more credible because not only did they get this information from Brendan, but they even tried to offer him some false information and he denied it. Right? So the idea of this question is to give the, 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 the confession itself more integrity, okay? And, and, and in theory, if Brendan had reacted the way that they would hope, then that's, that would have been one thing it could prove, but that's not the way it went down. Initially, what you're about to hear, we're going to, about, we're going to go back to the clip here in a second. Initially, what you hear is Brendan says, no, he doesn't remember it. And had they stopped there, it would have been a pretty damning thing. Possibly. Possibly. It would have been a pretty damning thing. But he, they didn't stop there. Tom Fassbender, I think, sensed something in Brendan's, vo you know, whatever. And felt like Brendan wasn't sure, or he sounded unsure, or whatever it was. And so Tom Fassbender wanted to go for, like, you know, like that just wanted to kind of get that little bit of extra, you know, oomph, right? So he, he, he questions Brendan further about it. So, here, let me show you, and we'll come on back. Do you disagree with me when I say that? No, but I don't know what it was. Okay, so you see there where Fassbender was kind of felt like the first answer maybe wasn't enough. He wanted more, more concrete reassurance, right? So he presses Brendan further, you know, because think about it. He asked him. You know, we know Teresa had a tattoo on her stomach. Do you remember that? And Brendan says, no. That's disagreeing with their fact that they said she had a tattoo, right? They said she had it. She didn't really have it. But they said she did. He said, no. He didn't remember it. And that's what they basically wanted. So Fassbender goes that one step further and saying, do you disagree with me when I say that? Expecting Brendan to say, yes, I disagree with you. To, to keep the consistency so that their control question will function the way they want it to. That's not what happened, though, because the moment that Tom Fassbender asks Brendan, do you disagree with me, that puts Brendan on the defensive as he's been all throughout the interview. And he's immediately going, oh, my God, oh, no, I don't want to be, I don't want to be disagreeing with them, and I don't want them to start telling me to be honest again. I don't, you know, that's going to be the things that were going through Brendan's mind. Especially because he feels overwhelmed, as I'm going to show now. I'm going to show you guys some of the clips from the video I did about the paper that was written recently uh, with the Wisconsin law professor and the speech-language pathologist uh, there in Wisconsin, where they go under the hood of this, this confession, and they really point out some very significant factors. And we're going to go into that now. And they, one of the things they talk about a lot is how the amount of just verbiage from the, from the investigators on, Brent, on, a, on, a, on a person like Brendan Dassey who had a diagnosed speech language impairment essentially that the way that their avalanche of words came up and, and, and what it did to him and how it affected him and, and that sort of thing it's, they, they go all through that but I'm going to show you guys some of the statistics of the confession that they built 
as they went through it and did their under the hood analysis of it so that it sh you can see how these these guys were overwhelming Brendan okay so the important thing to remember what happened here in this control question and go ahead and, and, and remember you know as we move on here is that Brendan right there initially says no and gives them the answer they want it would have been a success at that point but obviously clearly Tom Fassbender felt it needed to be a little more concrete for whatever reason and he pushed it that much further asking Brendan if he disagreed with him and by wording it that way I think he immediately put Brendan on the defensive because Brendan had been getting browbeat and bullied that whole time and he figured it was more of the same, right? Because Brendan doesn't know it's a control question. Brendan's not in the know on that. He just thinks it's another question, no different from any of the others, right? So the fact that he flip-flops on it proves exactly how malleable he is and how willing he is to please the investigators and tell them what he thinks they want to hear because he thinks they he thinks they didn't want him to disagree by Tom Fassbender asking do you disagree with me Brendan immediately thinks oh my god they didn't want me to disagree that's what that effectively did and it shows that they it's them dictating what Brendan's saying whether they I mean whether they were fully realizing it or not they had to have some inkling of it because that's clearly what happens here. Brendan flip-flops and says, no, he doesn't disagree. That means he's agreeing with them that Teresa had a tattoo and Teresa didn't have. It was a made-up fact. This is, that's why this was a control question. You know, Brendan was supposed to deny it, and that was supposed to make his overall confession more credible. But because he ends up flip-flopping and agreeing with them, it nullifies it. It's meaningless and stupid and shows exactly how malleable Brendan is in the hands of these investigators. So, to put a little finer point on it, we're going to go ahead and go into the, some of the statistics from the recent paper written about Brendan's confession, just to give you guys a little extra something to think about and consider. All right, so this is brilliant. This is another one of the ways that they broke this down just before they got in, you know, to really, you know, and analyzing it, you know, with a fine tooth comb. These are just some of the peripheral things that they're looking at. And I mean, who did the talking? Whether in a clinical or a forensic setting, the person questioning an adolescent with a language impairment should sit back and let the interviewee do the talking as much as possible. In this interview, the questioners did anything but. There was a remarkable disparity in the amount of talking done by the police and Brendan. And although Brendan was the informant, the police spoke more than twice as much, two and a half times. The police used a total of 18,325 words in the two interviews we focused on, while Brendan used only 6,998 words, making his contribution a mere 28% of the total interview. These numbers alone tell us that this interview was utterly inappropriate for Brendan. And so you can see down here the graph. So this is the February 27th interview here, right? The dark color, it says right down here, the dark color is the police. The lighter color is Brendan Dassey, you can see right here. So here's the amount of the police speech compared to Brendan Dassey's on February 27th. And here's the amount of Wiegert and Fassbender's speech compared to Brendan Dassey's speech here on March 1st. So quite interesting to see it visually like that on the bar graph. So, all right. This is also quite interesting because they're also going in and showing here that at the beginning here or that during the interview these are the type of questions asked during each one of the interviews right so this here this represents yes or no questions where obviously the answer is limited to a yes or a no it allows them to hopefully steer the the in content you know a little easier right these ones here are a question that involves when like the the, the word when it starts with the word when or you know even who or whatever right so um, that sort of stuff. So that's what this is. These here, multiple choice questions. Again, where 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 they're kind of able to steer him into a limited number of answers, you know, potentially. So allowing them to steer things better. And then look at this tiny tiny little bar here, and you can see these are the same proportions on both interviews. But this tiny little bar, those are open-ended questions. So this is the amount of open-ended questions they were putting to Brendan 
I just think it's interesting to look at that you know visually get that representation of how that was happening these these more content you know driving style uh, questions are being used more prevalently and the open-ended question which is supposed to be the the way you're supposed to do this and the you know should be the basically this bar should be as high as these bars and the fact that it's not is very interesting all right so <clears throat> I often get asked, you know, here at Kose, why do you talk so much about the control question, you know? Why, why, why pay so much attention to that? It seems such a small thing or whatever. Well, it's really not, folks. It's really not. Okay? I've been, I've been following this stuff since 2000, January of 2016. I know that in 2017, Fassbender and Kratz were going around on TV shows and everything, and they were talking, and, and Fassbender kept bringing up this control question as proof that Brendan's confession was true. And he kept talking about it that it proved that he that he 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 uh, he denied this tattoo that they that he made up and all this right he's 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 offering this as proof that Brendan's confession is true, and when you go and look at it that's that's he only he doesn't play the part where where he asks Brendan do do you disagree with me and Brendan says no he leaves that out when he plays the clip, right he just plays the clip where he hear where you hear him ask the question and Brendan says no, and then he stops the clip. But when you listen to the whole thing, you see Brendan flip flops on it. That's hardly proof that that he knew anything. I mean, it's it's just ridiculous, right? And so because Fassbender was doing that, and then with the on bank majority using it in their decision, that just set me off all again because I'm like, wait a second, these are judges. They're supposed to understand the English language. What happened here, right? So that's why I talk about the control question because it's been misrepresented publicly, very publicly. And so I will continue to use my tiny little platform here to, to continue to, to, to speak against that horrible lie. It's a lie. It, it, it proves how malleable Brendan was in the hands of these investigators. That's what it proves. And then you go on to the, the, the other things that I added there, the bar graphs that showed the amount of talking that Fassbender and Wiegert did compared to the amount of talking Brendan did. And it's not supposed to be that way. The suspect is supposed to be the one doing most of the talking. Or at least it's supposed to be more level. Okay, but you can see that they've done almost two and a half. They've talking, they're talking almost two and a half more times than Brendan is. That means they are, they are coloring the conversation. They are saying a lot of things. They are passing along a lot of information that Brendan is then able to, to spit back to them in an effort to please them because that's what Brendan ends up trying to do. The question, the control question also proves that. That Brendan was trying to please them because when he's afraid that they're mad at him, when Brent, when Fassbender asks, do you disagree with me when I say that, he's afraid Fassbender's mad at him. So he immediately flip-flops on his answer, right? <laughs> so that's, it's, it's for me, it's to point out, look, folks, this is what they are pointing to as proof that what they did is right. And it proves how wrong it is. So we need to continue to point these things out where they're pointing to this as proof of a good job they did when it's proof of what a crappy job they did. Because as we can see, they were clearly doing most of the talking. That means they were they were they were in control of the input and putting things in Brendan's head and doing all the things that they were doing. And then we get to the part about the questions where they were asking more yes and no questions than any other kind of questions. Uh, they you know which is which is kind of a bad idea, folks. And do you know why? Because think about what you have to do when you ask somebody a yes or no question. You have to give a, a, a pretty specific, you know, event or a, a chain of, you know, whatever, a question about something. You have to plug in facts and whatever to ask somebody, you know, is this yes or no about this, right? So you have to essentially give a bunch of information in your question when you ask it. That's why those questions aren't they're frowned upon in interrogations because you're just giving up too much information in the asking of the question and that's why open more open-ended questions are preferred and be are better for interrogations because that way you're not contaminating the interrogation but yes or no questions do that more than almost more than any other question because like I said you have to convey so much information in the question that you're contaminating the interview so these are the things that, that, that are getting pointed out. And these are the things that, that, that need to continue to be talked about because what happened to Brennan is ridiculous. Um, so 
this is my you know latest video about the control question I wanted to go ahead and add in those stats from that recent paper because they're brilliant uh, I hope everybody enjoyed it uh, those of you who are got here from Fen's tweet uh, from her hashtag 80 more 80 more things um, you know I hope you guys will hit subscribe and stick around if you haven't already and uh, we'll see you guys Hello.